The government started to acknowledge these kind of areas. So gradually they started extending infrastructure like water and sewage and electricity and uh, roads uh, to these areas, which became sort of a quasi status of acknowledgement. And um, as the, this kind of servicing progresses, the older areas becomes even more acknowledged. So we will see now the starting area of Faisal, which is before Bula, which is becoming now, it's, it's, it's part of the city. We deal with it as normal part of the city. Although originally it was like Bula. This is why Jennifer Bremer yesterday was saying that one solution for the informal is to wait for 700 years. Of course, 700 is too exaggerated. But if you leave the informal for quite some time, everybody in the city becomes accustomed to it. So it becomes like the old historic core, for example, uh, which uh, planners in the 60s thought of having alleyways, like sort of thoroughfares and so on, crossing it. Um, so back to Bulaid Dakrur. Bulaid Dakrur is a huge area. It's nine square kilometer, and it inhabitants is conservative assumptions will be a million, but some people say it's 1.2. And we made, uh, in, in 2005, we made an estimate. Of course, the census in 2005 was actually 500,000, so half a million. But we made a calculation based on the counting of the electric meters. So electric meters, it's registered. And we multiplied by the average uh, size of the family. And we came up with 900,000. So it cannot be the, the census data. So it's much, it's much more. So I think now it's... Uh, beyond the 1 million inhabitants. 1 million inhabitants and it's, uh, I was uh, discussing with Putin in the morning, it's, a, it's administrative boundary, so it's a district uh, of Giza city. Uh, Greater Cairo is like three governorates. So to the uh, east of the Nile, it's Cairo and on the north, Kalubeya, but on the west of the Nile, it's Giza. So first of all, the, the, this also is part of the administrative fragmentation of the, of the um, sort of the city. So the city of Greater Cairo, it's administratively three governorates. And the Giza governorate is subdivided into seven districts. One of them is Bula Dakrur. So this is in itself is a kind of acknowledgement that Bula is a district administration. It has a district building. It has uh, public employees who are responsible for the district. So, and just to also confirm what I said about the quasi status of informality, Strange enough, in the consolidated areas of Bula, people can issue building permits now. So to issue a building permit, that means that the government even acknowledges you more that this land is, can be designated for housing. And this is very strange because there is no uh, sort of master plan or uh, detailed plan in Bula at Dakrur. So which means that even this issuing of uh, building permits is not sort of 100% um, correct. Uh, again, what we will notice, we will not have enough time to go inside Bula Dakrur. It's a huge area, as I said, but uh, we will follow the path we have, we have uh, uh, designed. And um, one of the stops, we will also see some sort of the layers of the development of Bula Dakrur. Bula Dakrur, originally because it was all agriculture, so what was there in the 40s and 50s were only some villages. So what happened is that after the flux of urbanization, these villages were eaten up by urban growth. So gradually, coming from the main streets, people are building their quote by uh, quote unquote urban houses, and they surrounded these villages. So these village cores remained there. We will visit, visit one of them. We will see sort of multi-layer housing, housing from the uh, uh, from the village core which is very deteriorating now uh, in terms of conditions and also the new developments over three or four decades since the 70s and on. Um, I think it's very important not also to look into the buildings. Um, it's very important to see the activities. I know that we're going on a Saturday morning and early enough in the morning. So maybe we you will see the streets not very crowded. And I tell you, after working, I worked in Bulada Crew for six years. So my office was in the district building for six years, going daily. And after a while, like sort of few months, it happened that we started one of our community meetings in the evening. And I went at night to Bula, and as if I went to somewhere else completely different. Night is 
totally different. Why? Can I just, uh, sorry for yes. the We are crossing, crossing the Nile. We are the west side of the Nile. Huh? So everything from here on is Giza. So this is Cairo at your back and, and in front uh, is Giza. This, this bridge called the University Bridge, this same uh, axis, that's where Khaled Malaysia. No, that's okay. It's okay. Uh, you can see, to get to the southern edge of Bula, we take this bridge. We will start talking about bridges and we're talking about disconnection from the city. To get to Bula, it's a bit not very direct from central part of Giza. So we take the bridge and... We are very... We will become here somewhere. These are stops. The right is the Omraniya. Yeah. Yes. So, <coughs> right this now, starting from at your left is Bulaq Dakrur, the, the very Dakur. edge of Bulaq Dakrur. We will get into this street down there. So, Faisal Street, this is where we are heading. Uh, the, the road we are taking is actually the southern edge of Bulaq Dakrur. And strange enough, this street was at one point of time an irrigation canal, which was covered and became one of the main streets in the area. This is uh, Mr. Mahmoud. Uh, he's actually uh, the, one of the uh, board members of this NGO. Uh, this is NGO is called Al Taqwa Mosque NGO and because it's affiliated to a mosque but Although it is um, based on some... Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Ahmed. Ahmed. We started talking, so can you join, please? We're visiting this NGO, which is actually delivering services to a very poor neighborhood in the vicinity here. And uh, the um, GIZ program that worked here supported this NGO with very little money to start some community facilities. We're going to see them now. One of them is a sewing unit for uh, girls and ladies, and the other is a health clinic. Uh, the program was called uh, Local Initiatives, Support of Local Initiatives, and that was actually this one was one of the best examples, this NGO, because with very little money, I think it's not more than 60,000 Egyptian pounds, they have actually expanded this uh, service and spend uh, more and actually uh, managed one of the few NGOs that managed to sustain the service and actually uh, mobilize more resources. Um, we will talk more as we go along about community mobilization because this was in discussion yesterday, how far the communities are able to organize and, and so on. Yes, they are able to organize, but on, in concerning the provision of, um, I would say, conventional services, what we see conventional might be very useful to the community. For um, very poor ladies, like at least, we will start asking questions now and getting more information about the number of beneficiaries and so on. But it's the area we're going to visit. The, our next stop will be in the same area, Abu Qatada. This is one of the poorest areas in Bulad Dakrur. So it's very in dire need of support of NGOs. It's 60,000 uh, Egyptian pounds that was uh, donated from GIZ, mobilized uh, funding, uh, summing up to 1.5 million Egyptian pounds in terms of more capital getting into the uh, expand, uh, expansion of these services and so on. Between 120 and 130 ladies have been trained on sewing and also they support them getting the, uh, um, the machines in their homes and start oh, producing and they also uh, and, they, and they market their uh, products and so on. So um, it's important when we come to informal areas to see, to start seeing also the dynamics of the community. They are not just sitting there and saying we are informal, they are also acting to fill in the gaps of, uh, the, the, gov the, of the lack of government services Government does not provide employment, especially for ladies who are also not educated and so on. So the, and the NGO is, is having this sewing unit. The, um, there is a lack of access to health facilities. There's only one public hospital in Bulaq Dakrur, 1.2 million inhabitants with one public hospital. So the NGO is providing a health clinic, which is now expanding also almost in a small kind of hospital or something. The, yeah. the, the also the unique thing about the services offered by the uh, NGO, the health uh, facilities, is actually that it is almost very low cost. 
So the problem that people from Bula can go to other parts of the city, but affordability is an issue. So here they have sort of symbolic kind of fees to get uh, seen by a doctor. And sometimes they get also free medications. So they get donations from uh, the uh, pharmacolis, uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies and they have medis medications that they can dispense for free as well. So there is a charitable element also in this kind of services which is accommodating the poverty in the area. Yeah. Uh, they covered all the kind of specialization and they started going into also the uh, medical analysis uh, kind of thing and so on. We will go up to see the uh, swimming unit, then we will go down to see the, uh, uh, the health clinic. And if you have any questions, please, please ask. Okay, let's have the questions. I would like to know what is the social composition of Kulakakur, like um, if, uh, I mean, which is like the main employment, uh, people come from where, you know, like, so a little bit of information about the social composition. ما بيسألوا على التركيبة الاجتماعية في بولاء هنا فأنا طبعا هديهم خلفية إن هي متنوعة جدا صح؟ متنوعة الغالبية العظمى فيها فقر اه يعني اه يعتبروا يعني فقر بس في أصحاب أعمال كمان وفي موظفين وفي كل حاجة في كل كل الطبقات موجودة اوكي ذا كويستشن أباوت ذا سوشيال كومبوزيشن أوف بولاء داكرور ريزيدنس بولاء داكرور إز فيري دايفيرس إن تيرمز أوف إتس سوسيو إيكونوميك باك جراوند سو يو هاف بيبل فروم أول كايند أوف باك جراوند يو ويل فايند Uh, administrators, government employees, university professors, artisans, unemployed people, very poor, middle income, and so on. And as we will go, it depends, you will see also um, different types of housing. So you will find housing that reflects the narrow streets, poor people, but also wide streets with uh, now rented or even sold uh, housing units with prices comparable to the rest of the city. So. Here, this attracts people also like sort of young professionals and so on. We're very close to Cairo University, so there is also some student accommodation here. So the area, as we will see, the, the consolidated parts are, looks like normal parts of the city. So that attracts people who are also uh, professionals and so on. Okay, any more questions? Any questions so far? Okay, so let's... They, uh, they hire uh, the person who makes the designs and the main cut of the clothes, which is the very professional part. He, he works already in a factory and he comes in the afternoon just to do the cutting. And then that gives jobs to all the rest of the team who will follow up on the uh, finishing and so on. The, these are some of the uh, models or examples of the production. And actually the NGO became so successful that they market all over Egypt. So it is not only in Giza, They market up to Aswan or to Alexandria and so on. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, the good thing is actually that the NGO also takes charity donations to uh, do clothing for orphans. So there is two things. You are, you are feeding a machine of income generation for ladies, but you are also using the charity money and the zakah money and so on. So it's sort of a double benefit at the same time. Yes, yes. Uh, the orphans and their families as well. Okay. Uh, the important thing here is about being informal does not mean to compromise quality, as we have said. احنا ابتدينا هنا بالمعونه بتاعتكم اللي هم 60000 جبنا مكانتين خياطه ومكنه اوفر اه خمسه فرق سو توك اباوت اكسترنال سبورت وي اولويز كويستشن وات كان بي ذا رول اوف اكسترنال ايجنسيز ان ذا ابجريدنج اوف ذيس ارياز سو وي كيم هير اند وي ذا ذا ماني جيفن تو ذا ان جي او بوت اونلي ثري ماشينز تو سوينج اند ذا ثيرد از ا سورت اوف سبيشاليز Now they have, they have up to 20 machines now. So it's very important how the community also makes use of the, of the external support. How, how do they capitalize on it and mobilize more, uh, more local resources? Mm. Mm. They get even professional uh, machinery to do all the different uh, decorations and everything. Oh, so exactly. Come in.
So this is as professional as um, a factory, actually. This kind of finishing. Or lay. Or lay machine. Okay. okay. Yes, all the ladies also, they usually they are in dire need of support. So they are either widows or um, uh, divorced or single mothers and so on. So here it's very important also to see who is in need, but not to get the, the usual thing that other NGOs do. They enroll them for charity. So they come and take 10 pounds, 10 pounds per week or something. But to get them learning something and producing and feeling worthy of, of, uh, of living is something that is really, this is what we call development rather than charity. Yes. So they enroll for training and some of the trainees, when they excel, actually they become the, uh, the, uh, the people leading the, the job. We will have a quick look in the uh, production line and then, and, and then we, we go down. Ladies for uh, girls, for boys, and everything. Okay. It's good to have the opportunity to see people. I mean, this is seeing people in action, actually. So we're coming to an NGO, seeing how they are engaged in productive activities and so on. This kind of production hubs, this is like informal businesses, or not completely informal because this is an NGO, but imagine the multiplicity of production activities in informal areas, which adds to the value of these areas. This is productive communities, and they are not just people who are a burden on the economy, in some sense. They do a lot of uh, clothing, uh, the formal uniform for uh, uh, schools as well for the small kids and so on. Part of it is charity and most, most of it is charity or also with the cost, with the cost of production and so on. This is a health clinic. It's offered to the community, and it has all the different specializations. So th this is for or orthology, uh, dentist, uh, and uh, uh, optical, optic, optics, and so on. And uh, they manage. Yes, and there's more uh, another dentist inside. They also started with very little money from us. No, oh. yeah. So they had equipment from uh, the, the donation from the GIZ was mainly for uh, dentist equipment and uh, and also for uh, gynecology and so on. But then they started capitalizing with the money and buying all the different equipments for investigation and so on. So now they have a sort of a full clinic. Uh, as you noticed that nobody is here now because. As I said in the bus, and also for the other group, everybody, everything starts operating afternoon, late afternoon, and in the evening mainly. This is because everybody comes back home, so the, most of the life is actually at night in, in such an area. Uh, in the morning, people work in the rest of the city, the ladies in, at, at home, the schools, uh, the kids are sc at school, and so on. So most of the service delivery is actually in the evening. I was telling you that people are not here because the community is working in the evening. Yes. What kind of portion of people they work outside here? The people who work outside are in the evening. In the evening, the people who work outside are in the evening. The number of people who work outside are in the evening. The number of people who work outside are in the evening. The work is very different in all areas. We are here in the area of the area. It's, it's difficult to tell. Uh, there is a question about how many residents live, uh, work in the area and how many work outside the area. I would tell you from our experience, it's the majority work outside Bula. There is, there is no major, yes, despite some of the productive activities, but this is not enough for everybody in Bula to work. Uh, so the, if you see, we will talk about the, the edges of the city, of the, of the area. And if you see in the morning the flux of people 
going on the pedestrian bridge, bridges to the other parts of the city is like in tens of thousands uh, daily commuting to the city. And we used in, um, when I was working with the JIZ to make a joke, it's called Bula'id Dakrur, is the abbreviations is B-E-D. So as if it is bed, so this is like sort of a dormitories. This is where people sleep and then go in the morning to work in the rest of the city. So it's really, um, most of the work is outside. This is, this is why also the area, the streets are busy at night when everybody comes back and they go out for leisure and shopping and services and so on. Oh. Those who work in the area usually work in the service, normal services like groceries, uh, small workshops and shops and so on. Mm. They have added an x-ray uh, in diagnosis for, uh, uh, for uh, the dentist. So, yani, they are sustainable. Question: 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 so this money is like 20 pounds to see a doctor. Outside you pay at least 100 pounds and more to see a doctor until 200 or even sometimes more. So it's very affordable. The doctors who come here also do some sort of, uh, it's not completely voluntarily. They get money, but it's like subsidized money. So they know that they are doing something half charity, half uh, being paid. So this is how also the community accommodates uh, the doctors are not from Bulaid Dakrur, they come from outside. Most of them are sort of high caliber men. In terms of rating, they are specialists and so on. This is why the, the residents come here, they trust the place. Ah, okay, okay. Tadrib, yes, yes, yes. Yes, this is true, but in public hospitals. Yes, they have to spend this uh, like almost a year or something, uh, like a sort of medical training for graduates, for fresh graduates. But they have to do it in public hospitals, not in uh, clinics. Bis alwa ala lawa tadrib. Tadrib. Ah, lawa. Ba unal hum dafil mustashfat al-am. Mustashfat al-am. Yes, but I'll be telling you that there are people from the zakah. I mean, there are people from the zakah that come here. Oh, oh. 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 نسبة التمويل قد ايه تقريبا مثلا يعني قد ايه زكاة او 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 تبرعات وقد ايه من هو احنا كل شغلنا قام على التبرعات ما ناخدش فلوس بس بس في الفلوس اللي انتم بتاخدوها اه الشغل اه يعني نسبة دال ده تقريبا لا هو الاغلب يعني الحدود 70% من التبرعات اه 70% 30% 70% donations and 30% is the actual service Yes, 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 oh, for sure. Oh. Yes, and even from outside Bula, yes. But proximity plays a factor here, of course, the people. And, and the, those who cannot really pay, they also can have the service for free. This is... Okay, they have on a register like 500 families that are um, worthy of support and they have um, a social worker who actually checks on them whether they, in, in terms of their income and living conditions and so on, that they are uh, eligible for getting uh, support. Free. Are they, uh, are they the only NGO? Hmm? No, no. No, in, in Bulaid Dakrur, Bulaid Dakrur they, there is more than 100 and, uh, 160 NGOs. Actually, in the area? In Bulaid Dakrur, in the area. 
Not all of them active, of course. Yes. There was a question about how did we come to know about this NGO and how did we support it? So we, we started at one point of time with inviting all the NGOs. At that time, there were 140. Um, those who showed up were around 60. Those who maintained uh, coming to the second and third meeting were around 30. So those who were the active sort of NGOs were engaged. And we started with classifying them. So we created what is called Bulad Dakur NGOs map. Because also there is a lot of repetition in their work. Uh, in the next street, you will find another NGO with the health clinic. So we wanted them to visualize what kind of service they're offering. We wanted them to diverse. And we started networking between the NGOs. And we started building their capacity. Capacity, this is what we were talking about, organizing and so on. And we um, helped them to form a sort of what is called NGOs um, forum. Uh, of Bulaid Dakrur, and, uh, and uh, so th and they started having sort of boards in the different areas and so on. We were trying to get them more organized at least. The least of it, people used to come to register for charity in this NGO and go to the other NGO. And, and so at least they coordinate what kind of people they are supporting, what kind of services they are offering, and so on. And, uh, أولويات عندنا الأيتام والفقراء والمرضى وطلبة العلم. ده بند أساسي. ده بند أساسي. تزويج. لا لا دي مجموعة بنوها ورا بعضيها. وبعدين للأيتام والفقراء والمرضى وتزويج الفتيات اليتيمات. كل البنات يعيني ما بنديش المادي للفقراء والأيتام. اللي هم بياخدوا عنات شهريه عشان ياكلوا ويشربوا دي اكتر حاجه اكبر اكبر كميه يس يحيى واز اسكين اباوت ذا برايوريتيز اوف سبيندنج اف ذي هاف دونيشنز هاو دو ذي ديسايد اون ذا وات تو سبيند اون اند ذي سيد ذي اوريدي ديسايدد اون ذا برايوريتيز ذا فيرست برايوريتي از فور فور سبورتنج ذا بور اند ذا اورفنز اند اولسو تو جيت اورفن جيرلز ماريد ذي سبورت ذيم فاينانشلي وذ and so on, and then comes the, uh, the sick people, so this comes through the clinic, and so on, and, um, and, then, and then comes the, uh, the sewing unit. So they are decided on supporting the very needy, and then those who are a bit better, and so on. Okay? Okay, they also support the students, and uh, they want to have a sort of a medical insurance for students. So they are also thinking of what is the need of the people in the community and so on. Mm. So this is a service for the students. We're going to support them, enroll them, uh, because they cannot afford health services outside. So they get a sort of a medical insurance which cover them all, all over and so on. Mm. Mm. Okay, so for the, uh, the x-rays and so on that they cannot do here, they made a deal with uh, an x-ray uh, center to get a 50% discount. So they send the customers or the people who come here there to get, yes. okay. So they also this thinking of networking and so on. تمام لا انا At the heart of Abu Ashada, as we said, this is one of the poorest areas in Bulaq Tafur. What we are seeing here is actually this is one of the interventions of GIZ. Uh, it's what we call it the housing rehabilitation project. Uh, the houses that you can see at your back here, and this one, these are like three of the main houses, and some of them are more inside. It was. Uh, okay, it was it was a small pilot of the um, the main purpose of it is trying to see if the improvement of the image and the condition of housing can also mobilize resources from the community. And uh, the reason why we didn't at the main street is because people think always 
that government comes to clean their facade because they look dirty and then just leave them inside as they are. So this is why we decided we had little money. This project costed 200,000 Egyptian pounds, which is how many dollars? Uh, uh, 30,000 dollars something. And uh, we intentionally decided to do it inside the area. And the whole idea behind it was actually to the selection of this particular node is because also it is very well known. So we wanted some exposure to the pilot. The mosque, which is over there, is very symbolic mosque. Some people say that Abu Qatada was one of the uh, Prophet Muhammad companions who came to Egypt. So it has some, whether this is true or not, but it, this area is well visited. And the, the purpose of the project is to engage with, uh, to see whether the resources of the people can be mobilized in improving their housing. And I think it's very also symbolic, improving the housing and having some dignity and, and some to take dignity in the area. Because when we worked with the young people from Bulat Dakrur, they said that when they go to Cairo University, like the young, young people, they don't say that the, they are from Bulat. They say we are from Giza, generally, because there was a stigma of being related to Bulat. So the, the work here actually was started with this house, where there is a very poor lady who lives up there on a pension. She couldn't pay anything for the renovation of her house, so we did it for free. And then people saw that there is good quality work being done, so they came applying. So we started telling them, no, you have to have the contribution to be enrolled. And as the work progressed, by the time we have done the 10 houses, we actually received a um, sort of request saying that we can pay up to 80% of the cost of the renovation. The renovation is not only the facade, there was structural, structural amendment of the structure itself. Uh, and also the, uh, all the toilet facilities and the sewage and water connections. The staircase conditions sometimes were very dangerous, so this was also uh, uh, um, sort of uh, amended. And uh, then comes the facade. The, uh, the, the main aspect or the main also incentive that we got an agreement with the district administration, most of these houses are uh, having decrees of demolition or of taking floors off. So this, this uh, is very dangerous because if sometimes it can reach a, um, a stage where the district would evacuate the house. So we made an agreement with the district administration and the residents that if the house is renovated, they are taken off this record. So the decree is cancelled. So that was also an incentive for the people to invest in their housing. I think what, all what is needed is just some sort of a co organization. And we hired an NGO the, who occupied this, uh, they hired uh, a place in this shop. So they were here de daily. They won the trust of the community and they saw that they are working with uh, good material, that they are doing reliable work. You need somebody who would, we were talking about the designer's role and so on yesterday. And here comes who is willing to do this community architecture or community technical support or design or whatever it is. So questions? Sorry, I'm not clear who, when you say we, who the project was organized by, that's one question. Um, and you said this was one of the original old villages, right? Yes. Or it was here. So in how the area is organized, is it still clear where the, some of the old villages are, or they have like merged into each other? They are completely merged into the, the rest of the uh, Bula'at Dakrur. Sometimes يعني, you can recognize them by, you see this uh, kind of street uh, pattern, which is very uh, radial. This is more village-like. And would the area the, still be known by the names of what the villages yes, were? Yes, yes. Okay. You have uh, Abu Qatada, you have Zinin, uh, so you have uh, particular uh, Abu Numrus and so on. These are known as villages and you can see the housing condition is different. As we go out, you will see layers of housing. We can identify some of the uh, uh, rural housing uh, yeah. also being there. But also, in addition to that, if we add the uh, urban morphology is quite different. Here you can see the street pattern yes. is more or less uh, organic, if I think. whereas 90% of uh, informal housing here follows, as uh, uh, David Simeon said, follows the grid of agricultural land. Yes. So as we start walking, you'll find other streets are almost perpendicular. Yes. And there's a very we will see on um, one of the uh, unsafe areas, which is slum-like. And this has a problem with tenure because it's, it's mainly railway station, railway station yes, uh, land. So this is public land. But this is an exception. Most of the uh, villages, this is like private ownership. This is not Hekr or not No, no, or no, not. no. And this is reflected also in the investment. This, this and, and most of the housing here 
is a sort of re replacement yes, of the old uh, rural houses. Mm. So you can see this investment will come only when you have this kind of uh, security of tenure use. And um, talk about the unsafety, there was a question because also for the people in the other bus, which areas are called unsafe and which areas are called uh, unplanned? Bulaid Bakru generally is unplanned with uh, minor unsafe pockets and unsafety is, is uh, classified ba based on the housing condition, whether, whether it is uh, based on the UN Habitat classification of four, four categories of unsafety. The first is life-threatening, life-threatening if there is, for example, uh, on a cliff or uh, in the um, uh, uh, on a river or a railway uh, line or something like that. And then comes category two, Giza only have category two, which is structurally unsafe houses. And for that, to, to call an area unsafe, you have to have more than 50% of the houses being of bad condition that is about to fall apart. So here, Abu, Abu Qatada, for example, is not an unsafe area because the majority of housing is, is okay. Yes, you still have some deteriorated buildings, but it's not enough to call the area unsafe. Okay? Any questions? We wanted to get into the area, you walk inside some of the streets, some of the poor streets, and you will see, we've seen Teratu uh, Zomor as one of the main streets, so you can have a feel of the two types of, yeah. Is huh? zone? Earthquake zone, I don't think so. We had, is it? Yes, but is it an earthquake zone? No, no I don't no. think so, no. It's not an earthquake, but we had, Yes, we had a 1992 earthquake. Yes. Every, like, uh, <laughs> 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 if you do a sample and then you will bomb again. So the building bomb means that all of you are employed as construction uh, workers, uh, as transportation. Uh, so guys, can I get your attention, please? Some, of course, in informal areas you have this yes, gov sure. government services just look to your right. This is a garbage dump. Presented down downtown Cairo. Yes, there is. There is a restriction. Yes, there is a restriction, and uh, when uh, the new under the new regime after the revolution, there was uh, a directive from the president to governors yeah. to start legalizing tukus. Yeah, it's still very slow in Greater Cairo because it will be in, everybody knows it will be less accepted in the capital and so on. But in other provincial cities, I think this is starting now. This is one of those aesthetic political campaigns that would be very effective: is yeah. to claim back the tuk-tuk as a symbol of the city. Yes. Because it's uh, it's one of those things, it's because it's, it's one of, you know, you were talking about the physical separations. Yes. But the fact that you can't see tuk-tuks in downtown mm. is also, is a is sort of a symbolic visual separation between yes. the cities as well, right? If you could take informal. a tuk-tuk But -tuk you know what's, you know what's the equivalent? It breaks the, a lot of those things. What's the, yeah. the equivalent to the down, claiming space in the city after revolution, not tuk-tuk downtown, but street vendors. Street vendors. Yes. So that's already been, been happening. It's happening big time. Yes. We have passed, we have just passed the second metro station and you can see once you have a metro station or a transportation terminal, then you have small vendors and markets and also lots of like sort of transportation that will take you inside the area. We are at the very edge of Bulaq and to our uh, left will be some of the new public buildings like the uh, police station and the only public hospital in Bulaq, we will pass by that. So some of the government buildings are also at the very edge of the area. Only one public hospital and one public station in the whole of Bulaq. These are public buildings. Uh, uh, hospital. This is the main public hospital. And before that, it was the uh, police, police station. Yes. We will have a couple of schools, also public schools, uh, to our uh, right. This also bridge. One of the few bridges that connect informal formal with traffic and yani vehicle bridges was one of the main starting points in the January 25th. People gathered here to start walking. Come along, 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 come along
This is Nahia Bridge, yes. That's where we started. Okay. Can I just try to address everybody? Okay. Yeah. Guys, sorry to get you off the bus again, but this is our last landing before we leave Bula. And um, we just wanted to show you this um, isolation or disconnection of Bula al Dakrur from the rest of the city. You can see what we have told you in terms of having the... Uh, the metro does not come up till here, but it used to be coming. And the railway, the canal is here under the other side of the bridge, but it is covered. And so, and this is the formal city and this is the informal. Sometimes it's difficult to say the difference, especially when you look into building condition and so on. The number of floors, of course, speculation is here, speculation is there, and you can almost not figure it out. Of course, the more you go into the area, as we have seen some areas like Abu Qatada, you can tell that this is informal, but in terms of the housing market dynamics in terms of the service availability and everything. Of course, the municipal presence and the organization of public space, as we have seen also street condition and the business in the street is, is somewhat different. But the important thing when we think about When we think about upgrading, what needs to be done with these areas? The question comes to our mind. How can we connect or integrate these areas more into the city? Having this status of isolation. Is this pedestrian bridge is enough? What happens on both sides actually when you connect? And I was telling in our bus as well, the people that can you, we use these entry points where you have this micro bus stop that takes you inside the area, the vegetable market and so on. Can this be sort of a connecting point to the rest of the city? Is it also as an entry point to the rest of the, uh, to the area? Can it be used to give a good image to the informal areas, this facade that we are seeing, so it becomes more inviting to the rest of uh, the people from the city or not? So these are areas of investigation of designers, of urban planners. What can we do with, this, uh, with these areas and so on? Also the walkway is no longer used. The walkway, no, the walkway is extensively used. You can, maybe we cannot see. Ah, oh, yeah, there it is. Yes, the pedestrian bridge is used. And uh, as I said, the towards the uh, rush hour in the evening, you will find the flux of people moving back to Bula. This area is very busy. You cannot even walk. Yes, OK. Eh? Okay. OK. 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 O